So, welcome to another Tech Talk. I'm Katie. I'm Max. And today we're going to talk to you about the launch of Hetzner Cloud products in the USA in Ashburn, Virginia. It's pretty exciting news. Yeah, everyone has been excited for it <laughs> about for weeks, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's been fun to like see all the comments online. Yeah. And especially to see what people were able to figure out beforehand, what they're asking for now. Yeah, that was quite fun to see because we tried to keep it a secret, but at some point uh, some information got out, like some, some DNS records, container shipments, company in the US, and then people started speculating what location it would be. That was fun to see for us, yeah. 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 So for people who don't know us so well, maybe we should talk about um, the new location. So what all is included? Yeah, so location. our core product is uh, yeah cloud hosting, mm -hmm. and so you can rent some servers, some load balancers, floating IPs, volumes. So yeah, the basic building components of a cloud provider basically, yeah, exactly. and we try to keep it as simple to use as possible. So uh, that's, that's really accessible for everyone. And yeah, if you are an existing customer, then you know those products and you can just use the US now. It's the same, the same products work there as well. So all cloud products from us uh, work there. Right, and if you don't know us, you're probably gonna be pretty shocked when you try us out and you see how quick the deployment times are and yeah, how definitely. user friendly console, uh, yeah. the cloud console is to yeah. use. Yeah, you have a really snappy web interface, every, everything, as if, yeah gets quick feedback, you create a server and like, I don't know, 10 seconds later it's running and you can SSH to it. So that's really nice to use. And we have the same performance in the US as in Europe. So that's very good. Yeah. Okay. Well, mentioning performance, what are actually some of the benefits of using this new location in the US? So by far the biggest one I would say is the geolocation. Mm -hmm. So if you're you are, if you are our customer, you also have your own customers right. in most yeah, cases. Right? Uh, you are end users. And for example, if they use a website and then you try to make the response for them as quick as possible, and there's a physical limit to it, which is like the distance between you and your end user. Right, because of the speed of light. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And if you host with us in Europe and your customers are in the US, then you have this distance and you can't get quicker than that. But if you put your servers in the US, the response times are quicker. And I would say for our customers, that's the biggest advantage that they have this option now. Second would be that you can build some high available setups. So you put some of your infrastructure in Europe, some in the US, and if one location fails, you still have the other one. Right, so, so you like disaster proof yeah, your exactly. infrastructure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. And yeah, also it depends a lot of, on your use case. And if you are on Kubernetes, if you're on some databases, then you also have this distance in between. So you need to take that into account. You can't just like set everything in both places. You need to design your architecture a little bit around it and decide what works best for you. And then the last one, or not, probably not the last one, but the th third advantage is the legal perspective. If you are a company, you sometimes have requirements. Like if you need to host in Europe or do you need to host in the US? And the US company often says, we need to host here to follow all our legal requirements. And they have the option now to say, okay, we're hosting with uh, Hetzner servers in the US. And that uh, yeah, makes business easier, even though it might not be as fancy and interesting for a technical person. Right. So there's a whole new group of customers who can suddenly use our products. Yes. Or we're much more attractive suddenly yeah. for this group of users. Um, well, are all of the features available in the new location in Ashburn? From the cloud perspective, yes. Like as Hetzner, we have those dedicated or those root servers and the cloud product. Right. And so we currently don't have any root servers, but we have everything that works from the cloud perspective. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, currently, we have the AMD CPUs in the US. In Germany, for example, we offer the Intel and AMD CPUs. But I think for our customers, there shouldn't be much of a difference if they use AMD or Intel because from their usage, it stays the same architecture too. Yeah. And that is also true for the dedicated um, uh, vCPUs, right? Yeah, exactly. Those models are yeah, available yeah, there too. Yeah. Okay. And I imagine that there are probably a few, I don't know, limitations or things that people need to keep in mind um, with the new location when it comes to certain features like floating IPs or um, internal networks, things like that. Yeah, yeah. 
uh, one thing as a customer you keep in mind is this distance in general, and those di this distance also yeah, has impact on our like floating IPs and the load balancers. So we have two different network zones now. Mm -hmm. One is in Europe and one is in the US. And if you create load balancers and floating IPs or private networks, that is always limited to one network zone. So a load balancer in the Euro European network zone can only use European servers. Okay. And you can't just move this load balancer to the US. That just doesn't Cause work. Because it's in a completely different network yeah, zone. Yeah, it's so far away. And on a networking level, it would get a little bit complicated to get this specific traffic over there instead mm -hmm. to Europe. Um, but if you want to move servers around, that works. You can shut it down, take a snapshot, migrate that snapshot and start it up again in the other location. Mm -hmm. So if you really need to move it, you, you can. can do, mm -hmm. but the IP addresses will change. So you have to accept that. Okay. <laughs> uh, and then uh, yeah, I would say a little bit of a difference is in the traffic accounting. Oh, that's a good point, uh, yeah. Because in our internal traffic is always included. So if you have servers in different German locations or in Helsinki, it's always internal traffic in between because it's basically we own all the infrastructure. But if you have servers in the US and in Europe and send traffic between, then we will count that as external traffic right, because it goes over, yeah, over the ocean, <laughs> under the ocean to be exact. Yeah. And that's a cable we don't own. And so it's external traffic. Mm -hmm. But you have, we only account for outgoing traffic and up to 20 terabytes a month are already included per server. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of headroom to <laughs> go there. Yeah. And only if you have more traffic, then we have a small fee per terabyte. But yeah, I, th I would say if you have that much traffic, then you already know and are aware <laughs> that tr that amount of traffic costs a bit of money. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you design a new infrastructure, like the architecture, then you take into account that if you do it globally, you need to count your traffic a little bit. Mm -hmm. So we have these two network zones, but despite that, not much else has changed, right? Cloud Console is still the same. The deployment times are yeah. still, still the same, still the same, which <laughs> yeah. is awesome, yeah. right? Um, and as far as I know, performance uh, is the same, or people should expect the same level of yeah. performance in Ashburn as they yeah, do. Definitely. So from the user perspective, uh, the web interface is the same. It's not suddenly more complicated. Mm -hmm. Just when you where you before could select between our existing data centers, there's now an additional one. And on an API level, all tooling should still work. You can just select a different location and that's all the difference and yeah that's really nice because you don't have to reinvent all your tooling just keeps working yeah. <laughs> yeah. well i know um because i was looking at people's remarks after the launch uh one of the first things people were asking about was like uh when are there going to be more locations <laughs> so <laughs> when are we going to get dedicated servers more yeah. more more we we, we want more yeah. Yeah, for us, it's always the same. Like when we launched in Germany, people were asking. When we launched in Helsinki, people were asking. And yeah, of course, now as well. And we are, of course, looking around, like what locations would work well. Um, can we offer dedicated servers or not? But we have to be a little bit careful, test out what makes sense, what, what people really need and want. Mm -hmm. and, but yeah, we are definitely still exploring our options there. Yeah. And when we made a decision, and then people will know, yeah. Or maybe people will figure out again <laughs> before we tell when them. When it goes live, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah, we are looking at what, what could work. And there's a lot of interesting stuff to come. Yeah. And I guess it depends a little bit on what happens in Ashburn, right? Yeah. So it kind of helps if people actually um, create more instances yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely. The more people use it, the more we have an incentive <laughs> for more <laughs> locations, I would say. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so I think your personal history is kind of cool looking back. I, I'm, I'm just meeting you for the first time today um, face to face, but you've actually been with the company in a way longer than I have, actually, right? Yeah. Yeah. I only started working here in April, but before that I have been a customer for around 10 years. Mm -hmm. First with the dedicated servers and then one of the early adapters of the VMs, like the cloud products. And yeah, at some point it was just like, okay, maybe I should work there. <laughs> Especially as I did a few like public talks about how how you can run Kubernetes on Hetzner Cloud. And then we kind of got in touch on social media and it made sense. Okay, maybe you need to talk more. Yeah. And yeah, then it 
yeah, suddenly I'm working here. <laughs> yeah, it's really, kind of it's neat nice, to see that. Nice development. Yeah. yeah, and it gives you kind of a cool perspective because you've been on everything, you've seen everything from the customer point of view and now you're on the inside and you yeah. get to make decisions. Yeah, and yeah it's definitely yeah, <laughs> kind of cool to know both perspectives. Mm -hmm. And I'm still the customer. So. <laughs> <laughs> So I feel like I could nerd out with you all day, but unfortunately we don't have time. So if you have more information about Hetzner Cloud or services or features or anything like that, check out the description. There's a whole bunch of links. And the most important link of all, of course, is cloud.hetzner.com. So thanks for watching Tech Talk. Yeah, thanks as well. See you next time. Yeah, next time. <laughs>